Retail sales came in stronger than expected yesterday. Silver despite a very strong dollar, which you'd expect after strong retail sales. That says the Fed's not going to hike. The dollar, I mean, the Fed's not going to cut. The dollar strengthens. Bonds weaken. So the dollar strengthened, bonds weakened, and gold rallied, but was kind of indecisive most of the day. Uh, silver just proceeded to ramp the rest of the day with stocks. Welcome to the Morning Markets and Metals with Vince Lancey, where each morning Vince brings you the financial and precious metals news to get you ready for your day. And now, here's Vince. Morning, everyone. It's Friday. I'm Vince Lancey, and today we're going to look at a gold upside momentum trigger, which is getting closer as we speak. And we're going to discuss for a second in charts uh, Silver's defiant behavior yesterday. Very defiant and very encouraging. All right. First, let's look at the markets. That's the gold silver chart. We'll be discussing that a little bit today. For starters, the dollar is down 31 uh, at 102.73. Ten-year yields are down almost five basis points at 386. The S&P 500 is 55.35 down seven. The VIX is 15.45 up 23. Gold is 2469 up 13 near the highs of the session. Silver is 2816 down 1920 cents, call it. Copper is down almost four cents at 409.70. Uh, the gold silver ratio, you can see that. WTI is 76.32 down over $2. Wow. Natural gas is 216 down three cents. Bitcoin is up over a percent in a range. 58,000 seems to be its home again. Uh, Ethereum is 2608, up 37. Platinum, Palladium both down. Platinum rallies yesterday late in the day at settles 955. And Palladium is now trading at 939. You can see that Palladium is down five and Platinum is down three. Grains are... Grains are mixed. You can't see wheat. Wheat slightly positive. You got soybeans down 982 down nine cents and corn down almost four cents. All right. We've got what we need up. Let's get the PGMs opened up there again. Okay. Here we go. Michael Oliver put out a report yesterday late giving us a momentum trigger we're going to discuss that in a minute we're going to start with silver however here's the home page uh retail sales come in on fire but stocks and silver soar that's an unlocked post for people trying to figure out what happened yesterday we'll discuss that a little bit today as well there's a premium post the uk just launched a bond dei scheme that's not a joke those of you interested in things like financial repression yield curve control and how government is obfuscating, kicking the can down the road, uh, dealing with large debt combined with inflation, uh, the activities of central banks are going to destroy uh, currencies. Now, people have talked about that for years, and I'm giving you another signpost another uh, mile marker in what's happening next. The UK is actively pursuing, I mean, I have to say, the UK is actively saying all bonds are equal. We're going to give you money at 100% collateral rate for your junk bonds versus your government bonds. It's pathetic, but that's what they're doing. And then uh, here's why ANZ Bank issued, that's yesterday's report. Let's get to the stories here. All right. So we're going to start with silver. Retail sales came in stronger than expected yesterday. Silver, despite a very strong dollar, which you'd expect after strong retail sales, that says the Fed's not going to hike. The dollar, I mean, the Fed's not going to cut. The dollar strengthens. Bonds weaken. So the dollar strengthened. Bonds weakened. And gold rallied, but was kind of indecisive most of the day uh silver just proceeded to ramp the rest of the day with stocks and copper by the way so if you look at just stocks and copper and silver the economy is doing fine 
Uh, I mean, it was quite remarkable because considering gold was tepid in its move, I cannot believe that silver rallied like it did. But uh, I believe it now. All right. Let's take a look at some some uh, data on that. Silver had a 4.01% move from bottom to top yesterday. Bottom occurring at about uh, 1, uh, 12.30 a.m. I say that because 1.30 was very significant. The market started to ramp and didn't look back. This is when an algo came in. And here's when the data came out. The data said, we like it. We don't like it. Screw it. We like it. So there's, there's the whole move yesterday uh was pretty significant now can staying with uh staying with silver a little bit more china you know we've been talking about this for a while you know the media is talking about oh china's not buying gold anymore right therefore gold should go down but it's not right first of all china is buying gold they're just not saying it uh officially i mean don't tell me they're not buying gold at all that's not true um uh, they're just not buying it through official channels. Uh, but meanwhile, they are buying silver. Now, they're buying silver for various reasons. But, you know, it's kind of like suspiciously when China doesn't buy gold, India does. Suspiciously when China stops buying gold, they buy silver. That's a record level of imports for silver. Now, what are they using it for? I mean, I can't believe they're buying this much silver considering uh, their economy really is close to being in the shitter. So I think that it's not as industrial as many people think. All right. Bottom line about silver itself, it is now in catch-up mode to gold again. With the gold-silver spread up here, there are sellers of gold and buyers of silver again. What do I mean by that? All right. This is a two-hour chart. The pink lines denote levels that there are buyers of silver and sellers of gold right? That's when it gets up to close to 90. And when it gets down to 86, there are sellers of silver and buyers of gold. That's the range now. Someone's actively trading this. If we break the pink lines in either direction at either end, expect the next lines to be traversed. If we get below 84, all bets are off and the gold-silver ratio could collapse, implying a much stronger move in silver. I'm not betting on it. I'm just saying that's what to look at. People are looking at this ratio now. They're not looking at this ratio to trade the ratio per se. They're just going out there saying, I need to buy gold. Silver seems expensive relative to gold. I'll sell some silver and buy some gold to hedge my uh, economic risk. And then when it gets up near the highs and no one wants to buy gold, someone says, all right, I'll buy the dip in silver. And that's what happened yesterday. All right, gold and silver. Let's talk about Gold now. Gold momentum levels near. Michael Oliver sent out a gold communication last night to subscribers, alerting them of proximity to a price that would likely reignite momentum higher. That price action starts, abo starts above, right? And it's in October at 2493 and gets even more confirmation at 2503. So I would say 2493 is a definite level for him. And 2503 is a separate longer term level that will uh, add fuel to the fire even more. Now, quoting him, all these fairly significant trend metrics offer a tight cluster of upside breakout resumption levels, which argue the arm wrestling of the past several months is over and the acceleration process resuming, meaning we get above those levels and you'd be a buyer of dips, not a seller of rallies. That's how I interpret it. People ask me, well, how much higher, right? And Michael doesn't give out targets, and neither do I. Uh, you know, we look to see how behavior goes. And I'm going to give you uh, a reference point. That's not very big. Let's see if we can make it bigger. All right. This is a measured move, right? We're using the October contract. A measured move is in step one, the market starts here, dips to there, retraces, recaptures, and breaks it. It goes up to here. This becomes that. This depth becomes that height. Market starts here, collapses to here, works its way back up, kind of like that saucer bottom or that cup or the, or even the handle, actually. Comes up to here, breaks that, measured move. This depth is your target up here, which is right around here, and it re-rallies above it. Now we have uh, where we are right now. This is a weekly, right? Starts here, 
dips to here, goes back up. If we get above his level, which is coincidentally uh, 24.93, uh, uh, you can look for a measured move. How much is that? Well, this is almost two hundred dollars. So twenty five hundred gets you twenty seven hundred. Uh, if his momentum level is right, uh, I would say twenty seven hundred is not unreasonable, especially with the BRICS summit coming and the election so uh, contended, contentious, I should say. Uh, by the way, you savvy technicians will say, "Well, what about this dip? This dip didn't bring. This dip didn't bring." A break above it. Well, it didn't break above it, but let's assume that it did break above it. Well, yes, you would be long and you'd be out and you'd lose money if you bought it here, right? But the market didn't appreciably break here. And therefore, this becomes part of this. So it's from this top to that top, or I prefer to look at it from this top to that top. Anyway, the structure says if we break above $24.93, $200 of upside is in store for us. All right, back to normal size. Uh, at the, In the premium section, we tell you how to better interpret this info and utilize it in your own trading at the bottom. And we share an idea or two on how we will use his levels. All right. Uh, we're going to skip market news today, and we're just going to go right to uh, the data. The data is housing starts, which are very significant uh, right now. Uh, you could see the stock market take it on the chin if housing starts uh, do really well. Uh, uh, in the premium section, here, I'll just share this with you, right? The price level is for reference. Remember, he he uses October, although that is that is the front month. It's not the most preferred trade a month. But if you're a technician, it makes sense to rotate to that as you move your numbers. The spot market is 247940 based on his number. The October number, as he says, is 2493. And the December number, which is the more popular contract to trade and is referenced, is 2516. So a close today above those numbers should bring some substantial momentum next week. Okay, that's it. Catch you later. Have a great weekend. Thanks for watching this morning's Markets and Metals with Vince Lancey, brought to you each day by Miles Franklin Precious Metals, who we encourage you to contact for your next gold or silver order. And Miles Franklin brings us a gold and silver special each week. And if you've been looking for a pullback in the rally to purchase gold and silver, this week's deals include one ounce silver philharmonics from the Austrian men in Austria, go figure. Fortunately, these beautiful coins are only $3.10 over spot. While we still do have silver under the $30 level, which it obviously eclipsed earlier this year. And on the gold side, this week's special is one ounce gold Kurans for only $60 over spot. And again, you can place an order by calling 833-326-4653 or emailing us at arcadia at milesfranklin.com. Happy to answer any questions you have and get you set up with whatever you need. So call us at 833-326-4653. And as always, thanks for watching. Please note that this video is not intended as legal licensed financial trading advice and is to be used for informational purposes only. Please contact your financial advisor before making any decisions. And thanks for watching.